In this class, we're focusing on torque and power. You can also think of it as winding up and releasing. So we'll demonstrate this concept first by creating a cycle of a character skateboarding. You'll see up in the top corner there, I've placed a, a reference just for the basic main poses of the, of the cycle for skateboarding. So the first thing we need to do is constrain the character to the skateboard. First, let's place him on the, on the skateboard. I'm just gonna select his main control and let's get him situated right on the skateboard here. So his left foot is the foot that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna remain planted on the skateboard. So we wanna get him into a position where his left foot is, is right in the middle of the skateboard. So I'll open up my outliner. So we'll constrain the skateboard to his master. So we'll select the skateboard first in the outliner. And then we'll select the character's main control. And let's go to constrain and we'll go to parent constrain. Let's open up the option box just to make sure everything's the way we like it. Uh, we want to we want to maintain offset and then make sure the translates and rotates are checked. And we'll click click apply. So we can close that up. Now if you select the skateboard You'll notice that his controls are pink. That just means that he's constrained to the skateboard. So if we move the skateboard around, the character will come along for the ride. All right, so I'm just going to start blocking out the general timing and posing. We want to get the poses, something very similar to the, to the reference here, and then we'll start estimating our timing. We want to twist his body. Notice I twisted the pelvis a little bit because his right leg's forward. So we're going to sort of twist the pelvis a little bit I'm just going to select all three of these spine controls and twist his body so we see a little bit of his chest. You can animate an FK, but I'm going to switch this to IK. I'll move things in the perspective view. It's sort of a combination of moving things in the perspective view and in the camera view. I'm really looking in the camera view to see my silhouettes and my, my overall pose because this is going to be the final product is going to be what's viewed in the camera view, not in the perspective view. So we want to make sure that it looks good in the camera view. So I'm just making sure that we get that nice S curve through the arms. Okay, so this is good for the first pose. I'm going to select my bony button. Just select all the controls and we'll hit S on the keyboard to set our first pose on frame one. All right, so now we have to think about timing as we're setting our poses. So I know I want to ease out of this pose. I want his foot to, from this pose, start slow and then come down quick. So I'm going to leave about six frames. So I'll go to frame six, approximately. You can go to frame six or eight. And we're just going to bring our character into the next pose. All right, so something like that is good for the next pose. I'm just using the reference as a rough guide. So I'll select my bony button here, select all the controls, and we'll key it on frame six. All right, so let's just scrub through that animation and see what we have so far. Later on, we're going to add some arcs. We're going to arc things a little bit better. Right now we're just blocking, so we're not going to worry too much about arcs at this point. So he makes contact, and we'll go to the next pose, which is where he kicks off. So this is going to be a very fast movement. So on the timeline, let's go maybe two frames, and we'll start setting our next pose. So we'll click on our button to select all the controls and press S on the keyboard. And let's scrub through that and see what we have so far. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You'll notice that the elbow locks here and there's a couple other issues, but we'll go through and fix that later. We don't wanna, we don't wanna start focusing on, on finessing the character just yet and getting too close to it and making all these little adjustments at this point because we're just blocking. We just wanna lay down the foundation here first with the timing sort of estimated and then we can go through and uh, make revisions to it and refine it after we're done the blocking. So we have our third pose and now we're gonna go into the the pass pose, the pose that we just set, the third one. We want to hold that for a little bit because after he kicks off, he's going to glide for a little while. So we want to hold this pose for, let's say, six frames again. So I'm going to go six frames down the timeline. We can, and this is all editable. We're going to probably change the timing a little bit later, but we're getting ourselves just close to what we think it, it should be. So we're going to go six frames down the timeline. We already have all the controls selected. I'm going to press S on the keyboard just to hold that pose. Now you'll notice our curves are all splined, so there's a little bit of movement there. So if we drag over, you'll see a bit of movement. And the, uh, his, uh, his joints all lock, but we're going to fix that after anyways. So it's just a hold for now. And now he can go into his pass pose, and let's give him... Or let's do four. Let's go four down the timeline. We'll go four, four down the timeline for the pass pose, and then another four to get him into his first pose. All right, so I'll just start setting the last pose now. 
And at this point, for this next pose, we're going to untwist them a little bit. So we, really, we're going to untwist his backs. We're going to untwist his torso so that it's more just from the side view. And we're not seeing his back or his chest. It's just going to be the side of him. So he's starting to actually twist back to, back to where he was at pose one. All right, so the arms are just making their way back to the original position, and so are the legs. So we're just going to key that. All right, so let's give them another four frames, and what we can do is just copy. With all, this, with all the controls selected, let's just copy the first frame. Let's copy that, and let's go four frames down the timeline, and we'll paste. Okay, so let's scrub over all that. All right, so that's our cycle. So it ends at frame 22 put our time marker on frame 21 and actually just set the time the whole timeline to 21 and then we can play it at this point look at our blocking see how our timing looks I want to think about where he can hold longer where he can move faster I think we can have him hold a little longer after his leg kicks back because he's gonna glide a little bit he just looks like it, the, all the movements are just too even we need to hold this pose for a little longer so right now we have it holding I think we went six frames So let's go 10. So I'm just going to expand my timeline a little bit. Let's just open it up. Uh, it's at 21. Let's just open up, open it up to 30. And we need to hold this pose. So this whole area in here between frame 8 and 14 needs to be, uh, we need to have more in-betweens in here. So I'm going to select, with all the controls selected, I'm going to hold shift down. Let's drag a box. Let's drag over all these keys afterward. And we'll go to the middle arrows. Click and let's drag it over one, two, three, four, just so that it's 10 frames. Adjust my range slider so that our timeline is at 25. And let's play that again. So that's a little bit better. Now I know the pose gets kind of messed up there. All of his arms and legs lock, but we're just looking at the timing and we're only focusing on the speed of which he moves, the variation of speed. So where things are fast and where things are slow, that's the timing, but you can shift poses around and experiment with your timing. I encourage you to do that. So our blocking is done. Now we're going to start refining the character. When I get into refining, I like to go in a specific order. And I like to start with the root control. And the reason why I start with the root control, the root control controls everything from the pelvis up. So I start with the root control first, refine that, and then I refine all the spine controls. Again, going up the center of the body first, and then refine the head. And then I do the arms and legs last. And the reason why I do it that way, for two reasons, to stay organized, and I know what I'm going to do next, also, if we refine the, the arms and legs first, and then we refine the, the, the root control in the whole center of the body here, the spine and head, it's gonna change what's happening with the arms and legs because this moves the whole upper body, right? And it also moves the legs. So if we refine the arms and legs first and then refine the root after, we'll have to go back and change the arms and legs again. So we don't wanna do that, it's really inefficient. And this, this doing it this way really speeds up your work. It's a good workflow to have. So we'll, we'll start with the root control first. So I'll start with the translate Y. You can press F on your keyboard just to frame the whole curve. And let's just scrub over our animation. And this is the process we're gonna take. We're always gonna be scrubbing over and checking the curve to see what we need, what needs to be done. So right now we just have this up and down action. And, and really I think it's fine. What I do, the only thing I really wanna do here is select the, the first and last key. You can hold shift down to shift select those two keys. And let's make them flat just so it eases in. Really, you could do that for the entire body. So we'll just select all the first and last keys and just um, just click the flat tangent button. You can have them dip down a little bit further just to accentuate that push off. And perhaps when he brings his leg forward for the pass, we can dip him down a little further too. Okay, so right in here, right here at the end, there's a bit of a bump in the animation. Let's have it ease in rather than rather than have his his root control bump up and down again. We'll just have it ease in so that it matches up well with the when it comes back to loop again, back to the first pose. The translate Z, it brings the the, uh, the root control forward and backward. So we could have a little bit of forward movement here. Now remember, this is a cycle, so anything you do to the first frame, you have to do the, to the last frame as well. So we can select both of those. We can have his, let's have his root move forward a little bit. I think these are fine. The only thing you really want to do is make sure that bump is gone there. You can select all the translates and check them. And let's go to all the rotates. 
So we're just going to bring those keys up and just eliminate that bump just so that it eases in nicely at the beginning and at the end. We'll do that with the translate X, Y, and Z. All right, so let's move on to the head. So if we go to our go to our rotate tool here, we can see that the rotate X is the up and down movement for the head. So we'll go into our graph editor and isolate the rotate X channel. We'll press F on the keyboard and let's scrub through. So as he comes down, we want to tilt the chin. We want to have the chin come up a little bit. So if I select the second key, we bend this curve a little bit. You can see when I bend the curve, I have my time marker right in between the first and second pose. I'm going to put it near frame four here. And as we bend this curve, you can see that chin comes up a little bit. So we can bend it a little and we can move the key down again, sculpting our curves to get what we need and then scrub through. You want to see that chin come up a little bit more. So let's bend it a little bit more and then we'll bring the key down. You can see what's happening. As we scrub across, we can see the chin coming up as he comes down. And then as soon as, just after he starts to rise, we want the chin to come down, giving us our, our drag right on the head. So he comes up fast. What we could do is break this tangent. We can break this tangent and, and just select the second, select the handle on the other side of the key. So now it's the tangent's broken and we can move with our time marker right in between frame six and eight, right, in, right, right on the in-between basically. We can bend the curve and see the result of the camera view there. We want that chin to come down as he's moving up. All right, so we can bring this key up. Let's bend that and see the result we get there. All right, so we have, if we bend this curve, we can see the chin comes up. And then if we scrub through, I think we can have his chin continue to come up all the way to frame 18. So we can move this key down and just keep moving keys up and down, bending the curves till you get the desired result and keep scrubbing through to see the result. All right, I'm just going to play through that. All right, so it looks like he's getting a bit of whiplash there. So maybe that's a little bit too much, too much drag on the head. So we'll just tone it down a little bit. Okay, I think that's fine for now. We can go back and make more changes later. All right, so that's fine for the center of the body. Uh, I want to go through and make sure these arms and legs don't lock like this. So let's start with the legs. The leg that's planted is fine. Okay, so from pose one to pose two, let's focus on the first two poses, what's happening in between them. So what's happening now is this, this leg is going from pose one to pose two in a straight line. If we scrub back and forth, we can see it's moving in a straight line. What we want to do is get it to arc through. So if we go right in the middle, you can set another key in the middle or, so let's go right to the translate Z in the, cha in the, in the graph editor. And let's take a look at our curve here. Let's try to bend this curve to get what we need instead of setting another key. It's better, the less keys you have, the better. It's better to bend the curve to get what you need. So I bent this curve. You can see with our time marker placed right in the middle of those two poses, when we bend this curve, you can see what's happening. It brings the foot out, which is what we want to do. So as the foot comes down, we have it out further now because we bent that curve. And now we have more of an arcing motion. Both sides of the key are affected. Both sides of the, the curve are affected on either side of the key. So we, bent, we bend it. If we bend it on this side, it gets bent on this side as well, which actually gives us an arcing motion on the way up. All right, so now we want to eliminate that, that leg locking. And all we really need to do is flatten this curve out a little bit. Actually, let's select both these keys and we'll hit the flat tangent button there. The whole time this leg is holding, between frame eight and 18, we just flattened out the translate Z so that it doesn't move in this direction anymore, just for that section. So it's all flat there, but it's still moving up and down. That's good because we have our key set to spline. It's moving up and down in the translate Y. And I think that's fine. Actually, we just want to get rid of this bump here right between those last two poses. So we have our, this is our translate Z. We're just going to bring this down a little bit. We'll bring that key down. Just keep making the adjustments till it looks the way you want it to look. So he's kicking his leg out here. All right. So if we play that now, we're just going to, we're just really just focusing on this left leg. 
Alright, so we're going to do the same thing with both arms. So let's focus on the left arm first. Alright, so let's go to the translate Z. So we want to get rid of this bump here. So we'll bring the key up a little bit so it eases into the next pose. We want that arm to swing down and then back up again. So we want a nice arc through this whole movement. So from frame or from our second pose to our third pose, the arm moves it moves in a in a straight line. If you look at the hand. So let's put our time marker right in between those two poses and then we need to move the hand down. So it's going to be the translate Y. So we'll select the translate Y in the graph editor. Let's try and break it. Let's try not I always try not to set another key. If we do that, That'll actually work out just fine because there's only one in between in between these two key, uh, in between these two poses. If we had more than one in more than one frame, we probably would have to set another key. But if you can get away with not setting another key, it's better. So we have more of an arcing motion happening with the arm there, and let's as we scrub through, we have the arm locking here. So that's going to be the translate Z again. So let's go to our translate Z. And we want to flatten, same thing with the leg, same thing we did with the leg, we want to flatten out these two keys. So it's this long hold that we have here. Hit the flat tangent button. Scrub over it, you always want to scrub over and see your change. So we could actually have the arm extend a little bit on, frame, on the frame 18 pose. We can just very slightly bring the arm a little out a little bit in the translate Z. So we can move that key up a little bit and you can see the what's happening in the camera view as we move that up and down. So just have it come out a little bit. Okay, and as the arm comes back, we can increase that arc a little bit. We want to bring that hand down between the frame 22 and 26 pose. So we'll go to the translate Y. We can try and bend the curve. If we bend the curve, it works. You have to be careful because when you bend the curve on this side, it also bends the curve on the other side. But sometimes it's a desired result. So let's just bend that and then scrub over and see how that looks. Okay, so it's too much. Now it's locking on the way down. So it's a little bit too much. We'll just bend it again. Just bring it back a little bit and we get a nice arc there. Okay, so that's working out. And we want to make sure we don't lock the arm there. It's the translate Z again. So we'll go back to that translate Z. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold control down to select both of these curves. I can work with both of them at the same time. So let's bring that translate Z. We'll get rid of the little bump in the curve there. It's just so the arm doesn't lock. I'm going to play it and just check that left arm. Okay. So that's looking okay. I'm going to go through and do the same thing with the other arm and just make sure that we don't get the arm locking. It's there's going to be the translate Z for the locking. And we want to make sure that it's arcing back and forth nicely. So the main point of this exercise is really just to create the, to set the right poses and timing that you need to create that illusion that he's torquing his body and releasing the power, or you can think of it as winding up and releasing.